build them as we move forward. But it is not impossible. We have the people, we have the brains, we have the will. If we really want to change our country, it can be done. But it can only be done when we stop complaining in our living rooms and actually get involved. I'll end my speech by repeating the most important lesson I learned. Politics trumps everything else, not economics now. We must get our best people in public service. We must not take leadership for granted. Some of us did. In 2007, 2006, 2007, by the time President Obasanjo came with Umar Radwa as his anointed candidate, we all supported him because, really, how can things go wrong? It's a member of PDP, been governor for eight years, and has not been thought of as a particularly bad governor. I mean, he didn't steal a lot like some others we know. But beyond that, there was no real scrutiny. And um, now, our country is going through some challenges, arising largely, in my view, from that lack of close scrutiny. What I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that next time we must scrutinize those that offer to lead us. We must have real elections. We must. And it's possible. Because I ran the Abuja, I ran the FCT. We had clean elections in Abuja. The proof is that FC <laughs> PDP lost in my, in, my, in my territory because I insisted that the elections had to be fair. I didn't care who won. I didn't think Abuja's results will, uh, will affect the outcome of the election. But I threatened, I threatened everyone seriously enough and I was considered a little bit mad. So yeah. people believed me that we had clean elections in Abuja. So Buhari won in Abuja. So it's possible to have clean elections. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. Even with the current electoral system and the same people in INEC, it's possible. We just need to have the will to say enough is enough. And unless we can lick people in office with ordinary people voting for them, things would never change in our country. There is no pain. There is no gain without pain. And there are no payoffs without risks. So those that want to have nice jobs or live here and expect Nigeria to change should know that it will not happen. It's not going to happen. It has not happened anywhere else. Change happens when people actually come in, take risks, are mobilized, and sometimes get killed, you know? But at the end, we leave behind a society that is better than we found it. And what is the purpose of life if you cannot do that anyway? Finally, in my view, the challenges that Nigeria have faced, the crisis that we have gone through and are going through, should be opportunities for us to reflect and decide that this country must restore its reputation, its place as the pride of Africa, because unless Nigeria makes progress, unless Nigeria develops, I think black people all over the world will believe that we are cast to be third world countries forever. That is a burden on Nigeria as the largest collection of black people in the world, one out of every five black people is Nigeria. And God has given us enough resources to make that dream of all black people and of Africa to come true. The ball is in our court, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mara Masarofai, uh, for 
very thrilling uh, um, discourse for uh, The Baroness, uh, if you don't mind, will be leaving us now. Um, of course, uh, she, she had to go. So we're very grateful. Uh, And a round of applause for Baroness of the Old There will be uh, time to interact and uh, questions and answers uh, put forward. If you have a question for the Baroness, we'll try to take it. And if there's somebody else might be also in a particular habitat, but if not, um, we'll just need to do with that. Um, I